Right, um, welcome to sort of part two of the dyno build. So as you saw in like the last series of videos, um, we sort of got the dyno rebuilt. Um, well, we bought the dyno as it was, completely rebuilt it, rebuilt the water brakes, um, and got 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 up and running using basically all the original Clayton equipment. Um, obviously, we upgraded, as said in the previous videos, we did upgrade all of the uh, fill and unfill lines and the solenoids so that it responds much faster uh, to cope with our modern sort of diesels and things. Um, so we've been up and running now for a couple of weeks, um, just sort of getting used to it, getting an idea for it. Um, it seems to be working fairly well. Um, obviously we've been using the original Clayton power output dials which basically show the roller speed and the wheel horsepower. Um, we sort of calibrated it as per manual. Um, and it's been giving fairly, I think fairly accurate results to be honest, um, but it's just it's it's fairly primitive as you can see um, it's just look at the board as you're doing it and sort of go from there um, it, we decided it's now that the dyno's up and running it's going to be worth putting a bit of money into sort of some modern digitalization stuff um, so we're going to be putting modern load cells um, computer software so that we can actually do proper sort of power runs uh, steady state tuning and it will be all the data will be on the screen and logged in a graph etc for looking at afterwards um, I think it would be a very useful tuning tool um, especially for a lot of the things we're building these days right so we, we've done a bit of shopping um, for computerizing the dyno um, obviously we're going to be doing it ourselves like we have with the rest of the dyno to save some money um, this is a highly highly budget dyno build um, but it hasn't really cost us a huge amount in total and it's we've hopefully ended, going to end up with a very useful very useful tool in the workshop which has already proven itself and we haven't even computerized it yet and um, we've used it to great advantage on several cars already um, so what we've got here is some of the bits we're going to be using um, obviously the most important things are the two load cells um, obviously before we had these two original Clayton units. Um, now effectively, before, it's, these here are literally just big variable resistors, potentiometers, and there's a coil in the center, and as you apply torque and reduce torque, it literally just, there's a big spring inside, acts upon that spring and moves the slider on the, on the resistor, um, which obviously gives you a variable um, resistance reading which is then put up to the dial at the top and that's what calculates via the, also there's a speedo sensor calculates the um, the wheel horsepower um, so we'll be modernizing that now with two digital load cells um, six wire ones so there'll be one on each water brake which can, that will then read the torque um, at the end of the bar um, we've got a summing box here so this is basically to combine the outputs from the load cells and with some potentiometers inside so that you can trim them um, so we can calibrate with one um, and then basically match the output in by applying weights to the top when we calibrate and um, we can then match the output of the second one to the first one which, so that as long as you've calibrated one you know that the the readings will be the same because both water brakes the length of the arm is identical um, so that should work that's basically for that um, We've got an amplifier here. Now that is basically the actual load cells themselves put out an absolutely minute um, millivolts um, in terms of output. Very very small output for per pound of force. Um, so this here is basically to take that signal in um, and give us either 0 to 5 or 0 to 10 volt output. Obviously it requires a 12 volt supply. Um, we we're looking for a 0 to 5 supply for the uh, software we're going to be using. Um, so basically that will give us 0 to 5 output which will then input into the interface box so USB 1.0 interface for the dyno software um, which will then give us an interface to the two load cells into the computer um, obviously that will then have an optical or a, some, some form of hall sensor or something on one of the rollers to pick up speed um, we've got some rose joints there to go either sides of the load cells to mount them uh, some extra six wire cable to go between the amp and the summer box um, just a standard 12 volt uh, DIN route power supply to power this and some other pieces the actual dyno controller needs power as well just a normal 12 volt job um, and all of the electronic side of it will be obviously getting mounted in the uh, control box we've already got here just to keep it all tidy and safe and dry and everything so that will get mounted in there the only thing that may be not is the summer box um because you aren't supposed to extend the cable so that may get mounted externally but it's um it's a stainless steel enclosure with glands so it's, it's technically absolutely fine mounted externally anyway um as you can see it's fairly well built so these are all the components um we've just got to fit them all in now 
Obviously the first step is to actually get the load cells in on the dyno. Um, I want to keep the torque arms exactly the same length because I know the exact length between the centre of the shaft and the centre of the load cell, so I'd like to keep that the same. Um, the torque bridges, which is the two pieces of steel that support the uh, load cell, which are removed now, um, originally are mounted on top of the frame. Um, I'd like to try and fit this now so that they can actually sit flush with the top of the frame so that I can actually put a flush fit cover on the back of those uh, uh, sort of water break areas just so they're covered in a bit um, and it will reduce the height because we did have one of my really low cars um, we actually had to just wind up the coil of us slightly because we actually had a clearance problem um, so we want to get that down lower now that we don't actually have that massive amount of movement required for the variable resistors because the, the load cells don't actually move um, we, we need a lot less total room so we should be able to drop that drop that down and get everything inside there and put a cover on the top of it um, obviously we're going to be sort of charging up all the pipe and the wiring while we're at it now this should be sort of a more final install so the first thing I'm going to be doing is basically deciding how I'm going to mount the load cells and we need to weld and make some brackets that bolt to the end of the torque arms to hold the to hold the rose joint in place there's the uh, load cell, so I've just mounted some um, some rose joints in each side and jam that um, so that's basically what's going to be sensing our torque uh, bought from a company in the UK so they're actually hopefully fairly decent right so I've just welded a support now on the outside of there obviously we've drilled a hole in the other side of the angle um, so that's going to support the uh, rose joint on the end of the load cell. Okay, right, so I'm making the new torque bridge. Um, I'm making it out of some nice heavy wall angle line. Um, so I've cut the ends out. That's what's going to sit then flush with the ends of the frames on the, uh, on the dyno to allow us to put a cover over the top. So everything then you see here is going to be recessed down rather than recessed up as it was before protruding, should I say. So I've sort of recessed each end so they lip over. Um, and then we've mounted the rose joint in the centre here. So I've drilled a hole in one side, welded a plate on the other, and then had two head spaces and the rose joint sits in between, nut and bolt each side, and that's what's going to basically hold the uh, one side of the load cell to the frame, and of course then the other side I'll need to, uh, to attack to the torque arm on the water brake, which I haven't started yet. Okay, right, so I've just mounted the uh, load cell on the left-hand brake now. Um, so you can see I've got the new torque bridge across the top, um, welded a little bracket on there just to take the top of the load cell. Um, I've then just basically extended the original Clayton bottom arm uh, with two bits of box. Um, just bolts, normal M12 shanked bolts through the uh, centre of the rose joints and it's all attached there now and secure. Um, I'll probably take it apart again to paint it at some point but we shall wire up and test it before that point. So just got to do the other brake now and then it's time to start running some of the wires. Right, so I've just made up the uh, second torque bridge now. Um, this is the second load cell mounted to that, um, so I just need to move, sorry, make up the other arm off the water brake for the other side and then bolt it all together. Right, it's all had a lick of paint now, I've just put it back together again. Um, so this is the left hand brake uh, with the load cell mounted, it's all bolted up, ready to go now. Um, and there's exactly the same setup made on the other brake, just between the new torque arm and the original one on the Clayton brake. Um, so now I'm going to start wiring it up, so the first thing to do is to run the two uh, cables for the, from the actual load cells um, just up onto the wall here, um, and then we'll mount the uh, summer box on the wall there somewhere.